An international team of astronomers has just detected something hugely significant, something that could unlock important secrets of the universe. They have tuned into the universe and discovered a persistent humming which is made by gravitational waves rippling across space-time. In the centers of galaxies, there is something known as black holes, which are extremely massive, massive objects, much, much, much uh, high, um, uh, heavier than the mass of the sun. As you know, the space-time fabric gets distorted when, when these two uh, large galaxies collide. And when several such collisions happen, there are lots and lots of distortions. And all these distor distortions combine together to form the symphony of, of, uh, of gravitational waves. And that is what we call, is, call as a humming, because that is always present in the background. The reason this is significant is because this could be a huge step forward in understanding the origins of everything around us, the origin of the universe itself. Now, this is a major breakthrough and something that the scientific world has been freaking out about. And one of the teams at the heart of this breakthrough is scientists from IIT Roorkee. First, let's understand in simple terms what exactly is it that these scientists have found. These teams of scientists across the world have detected that the fabric of our universe is constantly vibrating due to gravitational waves. Albert Einstein first predicted the existence of gravitational waves over a hundred years ago. No Goethe, no Newton, no Faraday, no Pasteur and no Lisa. And in 2016, a US-based observatory delivered proof of these waves. But these were basically short chirps of gravitational waves made by the merging of black holes or neutron stars, which were a little larger than the Sun. Now, scientists have been able to tune into a far lower end of the frequency range, ultra-low frequency gravitational waves. If you're a fan of Netflix show Manifest, you'd be familiar with the term ULF. Basically, these ULF gravitational waves are expected to have originated from a huge number of monster black hole pairs, crows of times heavier than the Sun. So these waves moving across space-time have a very different effect as compared to the short chirps which were detected in 2016. I would like to um, uh, talk about it uh, with the help of an analogy which has been actually um, uh, very nicely given by uh, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Mayuresh from Iser Bhopal. So, so, uh, so in this analogy, uh, let me just tell you. Uh, so, if I drop a, a, a stone in a, in a in a in a pond, then you see ripples in the pond, right? So that is just like a gravitational wave. So, so, uh, but now instead of a stone, if there is a very heavy rainfall, when the droplets of water fall in the pond, you 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 see waves again right but then there is a difference between the these two waves when the um, when the stone fell in the pond there was a wave but then you could see that waves lasted for a particular time and then it ended but when there is a rain heavy rain th there will be a continuous uh, wave which you see in the pond and and it's you you don't you don't know where where exactly these waves have been originated. So this means that scientists can now study the universe from a whole different angle. It's opened a whole new window into the study of the universe. From in 2016, we opened this gravitational wave window in ultra uh, high in high frequency gravitational wave detection. Now we are opening this low frequency gravitational waves. So so there will be a spectrum of gravitational waves also where different frequencies will will tell us about different sources will give us different information of the universe so the ultimate goal of this multi messenger astronomy like studying the universe through gravitational waves studying the universe through through visible spec light studying the universe through x rays gamma rays and also something known as neutrinos so all these uh, studies combined together will 
help us speak into the origin of the universe. By the way, everything creates gravitational waves, even you and me. But the ones that we can detect are only the very strong ones. The ones that have been detected now are the most powerful gravitational waves that have been known to exist so far. But given that human-made detectors can't really be that huge, how did scientists detect this? Well, they turned to the stars specifically to a type of stars called pulsars, which make the stars act like lighthouses. They create constant flashes of light to the Earth at regular intervals. The signals which come from these objects, they come with extreme accuracy. I mean, uh, in, in nanoseconds accuracy or even more. So, so, so that's why we call them as nature's best clocks. They rotate very fast and we receive radio signals from them in a very periodic manner and the periodicity is stunningly, uh, 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 I mean, uh, accurate and, and precise. So it was the change in the activity from these pulsars that made scientists pick up the tiny changes in timing, proving that gravitational waves were altering them. These gravitational waves were causing physical changes in space-time, and this was picked up due to the change in activity from the pulsars. To detect the activity, it took some of the most sensitive telescopes in the world, one of which is actually in Pune. After 15 years of monitoring this, scientists can now listen in to the cacophony of the gravitational waves that are filling the universe. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. We have been working so hard for this day and, and, and uh, I mean next few years would be even great because we are now going to combine all our data from, from the Indian collaboration, from the European collaboration, from the US collaboration, from, from China, from, from, from Africa, from, from, uh, from Australia. All the data will be combined and, and the future is amazing.